I wanted to talk about some thoughts about a simple way to help you choose your direction in life while also having a good chance of having a life which is conducive to happiness. So I like to think about stuff like this a lot and then I like to create practical systems or processes that I can apply to my life towards living a hopefully happier and more fulfilled life. We are often told to sort of pursue happiness, um, but the problem with happiness is quite elusive, it's hard to put your finger on it. And the reason is, in reality, it's just a side effect of all the other things in our life and the things we're doing and how we're living. And of course, uh, how we think about it. So there's a lot of stuff there, but putting aside all of this stuff, what is the simplest way to choose what you do with your life that will lead you towards a life of happiness, fulfillment, and when you come to the later part of your life, a life without too much regret? I think that's a great question. And I feel like at the moment, I've been working on something which is kind of close to the simplest answer I can kind of create for it. Uh, and that is simply to direct your life by doing what is interesting by pursuing interest in above basically everything else. For me, and I find it's working for me, a simple rule I have is I do what I find is interesting. If I don't find it interesting, I'll try not to do it. If I do find it interesting, then that's where I'm going. I think you'll never spend your life doing interesting things and then at the end of your life, look back and regret it. I think that's impossible. I think having an interest in life is a great goal because it strips money out of the equation and it creates a personal view on what success is and what it isn't. Only the dullest person thinks that their life is interesting because they have more or better things than another person. The consumerist version of ownership equating happiness or life is the gutter of interesting. It's just not interesting to just have something unless you created it. We are often told just follow our passions, but most people don't have a singular overarching passion. A lot of people don't even have a passion at all. Um, and this is also why following interest in is really important because you might ha not have this overwhelming passion, but passion lies on the end of interest. Imagine if you're just exploring all of these different interests or things that tug you in a certain direction. And imagine there's like lots of little pieces of string, these little interests, and you pull on them and eventually you keep pulling on one. And on the end there's a huge passion which can consume you or like give you a real, real focus in your life but you have to follow those interests first. You have to make space in your life to follow those interests and prioritize it. Because if you do that, eventually you'll bring home a passion. I'm pretty sure of that because everyone will have something which will get them, but discovering what that is and going along that journey to find it is, is not always easy. You have to actually allow yourself to do that. Often people will question what you're doing um, and maybe you'll feel like, oh, I'm wasting my time, I shouldn't be doing this. But what you can just use then is, oh no, because in my life, I do what I find interesting. I find this really interesting. And your naysayers will melt away because often they just fear trying and doing the same thing. So where does happiness come into this? Uh, I think it's largely to do with the fact that if you're doing something you find really interesting, then you're generally working or doing your thing in a state of flow. And doing, work, doing things in a state of flow is generally good for your mental health and it, that is conducive to being happy. Not only that, but you're spending your time doing something that you love, something that you want to do with your time, something that you value. By committing to interest in you, are actually being more responsible and more focused. And if you find a field or an area where you find deeply interesting, even if it's difficult or it's tough, interesting doesn't mean easy. 
because what you're essentially doing is following an examined life, you've got to look at things frequently. And when you're like, oh, no, I'm, this job or this thing I'm doing, it's now routine, it's not very hard. I've got to take it to the next level or I've got to find how to make this more interesting or move to the more interesting area of it. That's disruption, that's change, that's difficulty, it's challenge. By following interest in, it's less secure, it's less easy. But overall, you're going to have a better life, you're probably going to be happier. And when you come to the end of your life, you're probably not going to have so much regret. I always like those uh, web articles about Bonnie Wade um, and there's a top 10 regrets of the dying. She's a palliative nurse and she kind of collated all of these regrets from people who were dying. Uh, and one of them was, I wish I lived more for myself. Um, and that's about kind of f focusing on the dreams and the ideas and f things they wanted to do deeply in their life. Instead, they compromised and spent more time, you know, in a job or working on a career or something, which might not have been their dream in the first place. It might have been their parents' dream that they were always going to be a lawyer or something like this. Uh, and the other one was, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, which is largely focused on money because no one gets the end of their life and they're on their deathbed and they're like, oh, I wish I made more money. No, they're just thinking about the human connections they had and the things they impacted and the things they did. They're not thinking about how much you know, dollars or a little number in the bank account they accumulated over time. So by pursuing interest in, I feel like you can mitigate most of these things because if you've spent your life pursuing things that deeply interest you, it's hard to see that you could have a regret about it when you die. So what is interesting? Um, obviously it's completely personal, this is you. If you have an interest, a deep interest in fungi and you spend your years documenting and researching and blah, 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 whatever it is about that and rummaging around autumn forests, a lot of people would think you're mad. But you're only mad if you don't want to do that. They're probably more likely to be mad by doing something which they don't really care about in their lives. So there are some things I think you can almost always say are interesting things to do in your life. Taking risks, ideally calculated, is usually interesting. Audaciousness is interesting. Failure is interesting. Getting up again is interesting. Resilience. Resilience is interesting. Loving intensely, that is interesting. Being kind is interesting. Changing the world or just changing the world for another person, that is interesting. Taking up a fight for a worthy cause, that is interesting. Um, so these like kind of base level things and it's about struggle and trying and effort. And you can apply that to all the other things you do. So you take risks or you try really hard or you find something you're passionate about. Um, the thing is here and the application of what you do makes it more interesting. You could make loads and loads of money and that would be interesting if you do it in an interesting way. It's about the process, not the end result. You could make loads of money by just doing a pretty boring job in a city with super unsociable hours where you're not your own person and you sell your youth and at the end of it you have loads of money, well done. You'll probably regret that in the long term or maybe you won't but you'll probably wish You'll probably look at people who follow their passions and kind of, oh, I wish I could be like them. Or you could create a new business, have a huge amount of risk, do something scary, create something new, impact loads of people, and then make loads of money. One of those journeys is really interesting. And one of those journeys is predictable and probably more compromising than most people would like it to be. So if we're going to pursue a life of interest and we have to be a bit careful how we use the word interesting. Uh, if you look at how a lot of people use the word interesting, they'll be using it to describe something they don't find that interesting. Like, uh, yeah, my job, it's really interesting and it challenges me. But when people say that and it's a trope, you know it's a trope and you accept it because what they mean to say is I'm bored of my job. I don't like it. I wish I could do something else, but it's kind of hard and it is often. So. Be careful how you use it. Look at it as like really interesting, like deep down interesting, not superficially, oh, I guess that's kind of interesting and they do pay me, that's interesting. 
If you're watching this video and you're like, how could I live a life which is more pursued towards interesting, but you don't have a strong interest, just try and think down and just take note down what over the last 10 years in my life has been, has like kind of drew you in. You know, something you did on holiday or some creation stuff you did or some research you did into a topic which you were just sort of fascinated about but sort of let slide because, you know, you've got a real life to attend to. Um, just think about those things or things that you used to love when you were a child or a younger, younger adult but kind of let them drift out of your life because, you know, all the other social expectations and social values of what you should do got in the way of it. Think about those things and see if you can draw out something which you could pursue and just give it a couple of weeks and just go and do it. Or just like really research and try and understand how you could do it and see if that passion is there at the end of that little interest string. So I'm hoping that at the end of my life, I'll be lying on my deathbed and hopefully it's a good way into the future because any of us could die at basically any time but I'll be lying on my deathbed. My family and my friends will be around me. And the last words that I ever say, I hope they'll be, that was interesting.